Slater. Um, a fantastic story in the Express and on the front pages of many of the papers. These photographs of Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe reunited uh, today with her daughter, Gabriella. Um, hasn't had any quality time with her no. since 2016. But it's, yeah, it's just hard to see these amazing photos and not feel really emotional yeah. actually because this poor woman's been languishing in, you know, Tehran jail for the last two years on these trumped up charges of spying. Her case has dragged on and on. We know it's got caught up in the high politics between Iran and the rest of the world. We have Boris Johnson, the former foreign secretary, really making things worse by carelessly implying that she was out there working with, uh, you know, running a training course for journalists when no such thing was happening. Mm. We know that. So it's it's just, you know, her husband has been fighting this really long fight. Her daughter has lived in Iran with her grandparents uh, since she was 22 months old. The only time uh, Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe has had with her daughter has been, been in jail. And these are her first three days out. And I just think, gosh, the photos are just like Absolute amazing. Absolute joy on their faces. And, and Tom, she said that she was just looking forward to brushing her daughter's hair, mm. playing with her doll's houses and lying next to her. Exactly. It's just all those kind of really simple human parental things which she's been completely missing. I think I'm right in saying that the last time that she saw each other um, properly was when she was a toddler, effectively. Mm. So this is a really, really important moment. And just, I think the world is watching, hoping that this could be the sign that things might be softening in relation to that. Yes, um, so she's been released on furlough, which means she's been released for three days. Mm. The hope from Richard Ratcliffe, her husband, and the family is that this could be extended and be the beginning of the end. Mm. Completely, and us, the idea is that hopefully this will just be a point in which, again, her lawyers can then go meet with them. These things are just extended, as you say. But again, I think, as Sonia says, this is unfortunately, this case has been caught up in kind of geopolitics in this kind of horrendous fashion, um, and so it just makes it that much but more charged. But we... We have a new Sitting foreign home. secretary. Is that a factor in this, do we know? Um, I mean, perhaps... Um, you know, the British government has always been working behind the scenes to mm. secure her release. Um, it, it may have helped, who knows? Uh, there was certainly a very strongly worded tweet from Jeremy Hunt um, earlier uh, about how this release now needed to be made permanent. Uh, but I, I suspect it's also, this is about how the Iranian government can do this while losing the least sort of possible face. Um, so I think we've just all really got to keep our fingers mm. crossed Absolutely. now that three days is going to turn into a bit longer. Yeah, and that family can be reunited. Absolutely. Um, on to The Guardian. Aaron Banks, he applied to join the Conservative Party. Yes, so the Leave.eu found that he was calling on um, all Leave.eu supporters, the unofficial Brexit group, to join the Tory party um, in order to be, have a vote in a potential upcoming leadership election to secure a strong Brexit candidate. Him and his kind of sidekick, Andy Wigmore, both signed up. They were bragging about the fact they'd become members on Twitter, and the Tories Maybe have promptly <laughs> responded saying that um, actually they haven't, um, as they're blocking entry as, such yeah. as him. So the bad boys of Brexit are out of the Tory party for And now. this is something that William Hague had warned about. Yeah, absolutely, because um, the Conservative Party, like the Labour Party, in the end, the vote for who the next leader will be if Theresa May were to be toppled or to stand down, you know, MPs in the Conservative Party choose the top two candidates and they both go to the Tory members to select in a vote. And I think there's a concern that if lots and lots of people decide to join the Tory Party in a form of entryism, people like Aaron Banks gets lots of leavers, people who voted leave to join and that could really swing the result and this is why I personally think you know you should leave it up to MPs to choose the next leader of a political party in a parliamentary system otherwise you do get this form of entryism and it's not really what the spirit of politics is about in my view. Uh, okay um, Sonia, Tom for now thank you more coming up in the next hour for now though let's take a look at the weather. <laughs> 